One of the things that I really don't understand is how is Realme able to provide us an experience like this at the price point that they're trying to offer? Today, they announced both the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Plus. They're both going to be new devices offering us a more of a budget friendly price point because they technically start at around $360. And of course, the ability of giving us telephoto experiences only found in flagship devices in this price point. To top it off, a design that is absolutely stunning and eye-catching and a very unique experience. Again, building on what they had last year, we have three colors this year. So without further ado, this is the 12 Pro Plus 5G from Realme. Let's go ahead and talk about why this makes sense. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. This is the packaging for the 12 Pro Plus. Again, uh, the one that we have here is in that blue and gold color. It is a 5G enabled device. In the box, we get a charger. This is going to be able to give us that 67 watt charging. This one is the Chinese edition, or at least will work in the US, so the plug is compatible there. But it'll be different versions depending on the market that you're picking it up. Uh, this one has a 5,000 milliampere battery that's going to be charging at 67 watts of what we get here. We do have a USB-A to USB-C cable that's also included in the box to be able to give us that ability of charging. There is no wireless charging. Again, keep in mind the price point that we're looking at this device. Last but not least, we do have a case, a clear case that provides us a protection, so we're ready to go right out of the box. And of course, we do have a screen protector that's installed, as you can see, present right there. Now, as far as the rest of the specifications, before we go too far, let's talk about the sensors or the camera sensors that we have on the back. First and foremost, you'll notice that there is a let's get let it focus. There is kind of like that watch interface. The design done on the back here was designed actually in collaboration with a famous watchmaker. This is something that we, again, we usually see at a much more expensive experience brought in in here. We have vegan leather on the back. This blue and gold look absolutely fantastic. We have the Realme logo on the side. We have three cameras on the back, obviously, that's going to be giving us the experience that we get there. This one is the brand new telephoto. This is a 64 megapixel camera that provides us the ability of having a 3x optical and a 6x combination uh, zoom and all the way up to 120x zoom. Obviously, if you want to be able to use all the digital zoom capabilities that we get. Dual tone LED flash on the top. Of course, the primary sensor is going to be the IMX 890 process, uh, camera sensor in there and an 8 megapixel camera for ultra wide. On the top, we have one of the speakers with a microphone. On the bottom, we have obviously the bottom firing speaker, USB-C microphone, as well as the SIM tray that's gonna be able to put in the SIM cards and supports 5, uh, 4G LTE in the US, at least for me. On the right side, we have the volume rocker and the power button. On the left side, we have a clean area here very much. And of course, we're gonna be rounding it off to that beautiful 6.7 inch 1080p, 420 frames per second display that also has a very nice high peak brightness for outdoor visibility. Fingerprint sensor built in into the display. We have Google Play services built in, of course, out of the box. This is gonna be, again, an international variant of this. And this one does support NFC as well. The camera on the front is a 32 megapixel camera sensor that's going to give us the ability of shooting 1080p resolution at 30 frames per second. Maximum on the back is going to be 4K 30 frames per second, and that's going to be partially because of what we're using here. This was actually a very nice little wallpaper. We'll notice that this device is running on Realme UI 5.0. This is built on top of Android 14. The model that I have has 512 gigs of internal storage, although there's going to be variants with different variant capabilities, storage and RAM. But at the base point, it's going to start off at 300, about 360 or so dollars, uh, comparing it to what we saw it in the Indian rupees. The model number that I have here is the RMX3840, and that's going to be the model that I have. I have 12 gigs of RAM. I'm also able to expand it with an additional 12 gigs of internal storage. I'm going to restart at a later point. 6.7 inch display, we talked about 120 hertz refresh rate, 5,000 milliampere battery. We have the 7S Gen 2 mobile platform processor. So this is an optimized version of the 7 Gen 2 that we saw before. Works really good with this device. And of course, the main sensor, as we talked about, 32 megapixel camera, 50 megapixel primary sensor, that's the IMX uh, 890, the 8 megapixel ultra wide, and of course, that 64 megapixel camera that's gonna be here is the OV64B periscope telephoto lens. Now this is a four in one pixel fusion technology uh, sensor that gives us the ability of using, uh, basically getting the resolution of that uh, 1.4 micron fusion pixel sensor in the back. Again, at 3X and at 6X. Mentioned the Android 14 capability here on top of obviously Realme UI. And I did receive one official update from uh, when I got the device. Some of the optimizations that we see here, obviously, is everything that we've seen before. Special features in here, we can jump in. Split view, flex window, quick return, quick launch, of course, a small slide bar, a sidebar, kids mode, and simple mode. But one of the nice things I see here is this is something that we're used to seeing on, let's say, Oppo or OnePlus devices. It's finally carrying over. Recent file, we're able to basically open them up. Also able to open up the file doc, the transfer content from one area to another. 
just file management to the next level. Of course, if we take our images and we jump in, let's say directly into the camera here, if let's say I want to be able to move Goku, I can press and hold on him. And then you'll see here, I'm actually able to move him and of course, move him over into the file dock. I'll keep him in there. So if I want to be able to find him later on, paste him into another image. Or of course, if I want to be able to just basically just get the experience that we want to be able to enjoy here. So we'll see here, this is again, the level of quality of image that we're able to get with that telephoto lens. But let's go ahead and actually jump out real quick and talk about the cameras and what we get here. So 32 on the front, we talked about the cameras in the back. As far as video capabilities, 1080p is gonna be the most on the, on the front camera and 4K30 on the sensor on the back. But you'll notice that we're actually able to go from the one, two, three, and six. So it means we're using the main sensor in the telephoto for 4K uh, recording. And on the front, we're using the main sensor, of course. We have stabilization capability, we have street mode, night mode, of course. We have the ability of going into portrait, jumping in between the main uh, native resolution of the main sensor as well as a, the 3X sensor. Of course, the 3X will give you the best resolution as we were seeing of those images. We have pro mode, panorama, uh, panorama mode, high resolution mode, uh, movie, slow motion, uh, time lapse, lawn exposure, dual view, text scanner, starry mode for nighttime photography, group portrait, as well as tilt shift. One thing that's interesting though is group portrait is not available on the main sensor on the front. It's available only on the main sensor on the back. So when I select it, you notice it does not give me the ability of switching sensors. And even if I was on the main sensor on the front, switching over to group portrait always takes us back. But let's not waste any time. Let's go outside and do a quick sample of the front facing and rear main sensor on the brand new 12 Pro Plus. Starting off with the front facing sensor here, 1080p 30 frames per second is gonna be the maximum we can do. Now, although we can shoot 4K in the main sensor on the back, and I think that's gonna be the probably the better performer here in general. Sorry for the little bit of a, the string light that we have there. But this is a good example of what the audio and video is uh, coming in from the device. And again, I feel like the main sensor is the experience. Everything is focused on the back. So let's go ahead and switch over to that main sensor right there. Now we're shooting at 4K 30 frames per second. And one of the really nice things is that we can actually carry this across all of these zooming lenses. So meaning 1X all the way up to 6X, we're actually able to keep the 4K resolution. That's very nice and gives us the ability of actually enjoying the content in regardless of how far the, the subject is sitting in there. Uh, the other thing that I really like about it is the blue color of the back sensor area that we have there is so nice that it reflects a little bit of color, but it gives me something to focus on when I'm recording videos so that I know that I'm always in focus or at least I'm looking at the right spot. Of course, the ability of shooting 4K with the telephoto as well as the main lens on the back is going to be the main start FN. So I'll probably say is if you're going to use this, if you want to rely on this for video, definitely get used to using the main sensor on the back, the, the IMX 890, and you're definitely not going to be disappointed. The telephoto lens, obviously, performance looks and obviously operates very, very nicely. But we, before we go too far, let's go ahead and play our favorite song, of course, Alex Grindo Jumbo by NCS Release. This is a uh, copyright free music here, and of course, going to be leveraging the top mounted speaker and the bottom mounted speaker to be able to give us that stereo experience. Jack it up. Definitely gets loud enough and also be very enjoyable for phone calls as well as video calls. But last but not least, of course, it's going to come down to that gaming experience that we get in here. Now, let's go ahead and lower the volume on here real quick. I'm going to launch Call of Duty Mobile. Now, I already launched this before, but the main thing that I want to share with you guys real quick here, uh, let's go ahead and say cancel, is uh, the side launcher that we have here and some of the optimizations that we have. You have the ability of choosing your profile, customize it the way we had it before, the temperature as well as the uh, the milliseconds here. Of course, the ability of customizing the slider. This is the music player since we had it. We have the ability of customizing the uh, brightness level, notification, game focus mode, uh, screenshot, screen recording, network optimization, touch, orientation lock, and all of these things capabilities that we have in here. System status, of course, will always be one of my favorite abilities seeing my frame rate, GPU, and CPU performance. Last but not least, as I mentioned to you guys at the end here, we have volume settings as well as the general settings for the app and shortcuts to be able to launch our own custom applications. Last but not least, as far as resolution and the main performance for Call of Duty Mobile, max on the refresh rate and high is going to be the best resolution that we get in here. Again, this is a 1080p resolution powered by the 7S Gen 2. All right, before we start talking about or looking at some of those gaming experiences, let's talk a little bit about uh, obviously the Geekbench score and the speed test that we did here in the US. The 7S Gen 2 is an optimized version of the 7 Gen 2 that we saw uh, before. And one of the main differences, obviously, is a geek score here is going to be 917 versus 2847 for multi score. So multi core, single core performance. And again, a long line of what the seven series of Qualcomm chipset used to be. So again, an optimized version of that. 
Now, when it comes down to speed testing, if you want to be able to consider bringing it in and using it with 5G connectivity here in the US, I was able to run my speed test here and it's 105 down with 13.7 up. Now, this was connected at a 4G LTE connectivity. I was not able to get 5G on my device here. It could be my area, but I don't have Wi-Fi connected. And as you can see here, it does say here 4G plus is uh, basically 4G LTE connectivity with voice over LTE activated. The design that we're seeing here on the 12 Pro Plus and the 12 Pro are definitely reminiscent to what we saw last year with the 11 series that came out. One of the biggest things obviously that they used last year were they were using basically uh, sensor cropping to be able to give us that telephoto experience without having to use a telephoto lens. This year, they found a way, I don't know how, they found a way to bring in a flagship experience telephoto lens with the ability of getting glass native resolution telephoto on this device and keeping it at the same roughly uh, price point as we saw last year. Again, starting at about $360. And again, I'm translating this from the Indian release, which had the rupees uh, value in there. So the price may be slightly different, but if you're thinking about bringing it into the US, you're not gonna have any problem, I mean, obviously making and receiving calls, connectivity. I know it's not 5G, but 4G LTE does provide a very good connection. Again, if you're able to lock in about anything over 100 megabits down, there's no question there's not gonna be an issue. Now, as far as the gaming experience and what we were talking about before, again, the 7S Gen 2 is a, an optimized version of the 7 Gen 2. So the performance is gonna be very comparable. It's a seven series. This is where the mid-ranger conversation kind of lands exactly. The processor is a mid-ranger processor that Qualcomm has been using, and we're starting to see more devices come out with the 7S Gen 2. Very capable, very uh, obviously very powerful enough to be able to give us everything that we want. So normal day-to-day -day activities, everything that you normally do on your devices, there's not going to be any question that this will handle it very well. Where you're going to start seeing some of the limitation of the processor is when we start talking about uh, gaming and images. So first and foremost, we notice right there, the frame rate, we were able to only go to max when we were looking at Call of Duty Mobile. Now, this is not by any means a very slow experience. This is by any means, not by any means like a bad experience. But again, to set the expectations, what you're looking in there. But combine that with the 1080p resolution, 120 frames per second refresh rate that we have in here, as well as the ability of having that 5,000 milliampere battery and the stereo speakers, you're looking at a very capable device that you'll be able to play games for a really long time. As you saw there with the demo that I'm sharing you guys, it is absolutely fantastic and it looks and it runs very nice. The images that come out of here, this is where it starts becoming again, that experience that we weren't really expecting from Realme at this price point. They have flagships. They have, obviously they have uh, GT series, they have other series, but the 12 or the number series have always been more conscious on the budget, but definitely always shooting above that category that they fit in. As you see there, the telephoto lens with that, te with that new sensor that we have in here is bringing the photography level to the next level. That bokeh, that natural bokeh with, again, the native resolution on those sensors, definitely is very showcased in here and you see those with the images uh, if definitely with goku and some of the other images i was able to get what i will say though is um, the ultra wide although an 8 megapixel camera sensor here will work great in normal daylight experiences the main sensor and the telephoto are the stars of this device so if you stick to those two sensors typically i only say one if you stick to those two you are not going to be disappointed and this device offers and delivers on the promise of giving you that value that bang for the buck experience so let me know at the end of the day, what do you think of the new designs and which color is actually the one that you guys prefer? I know there's technically three colors that are announced, but I only got a chance to see two at, when I was in Vegas at CES because we got a, a little bit of a briefing from Realme during that time. And he got me very excited for a device like this that exists that offers us so much and asks so little. This is TK and this is the Realme 12 Pro Plus. Again, this is the 5G variant and by far blue and gold never looked better than on this device. Thank you very much for the support. I'll see you in the next one.